Now, how about the second comment period? Was the agency's explanation, Chairman Matt's explanation, sufficient in your mind on that issue of the second comment period? Um, I don't really have a, an issue with that, to be honest with you. Um, I think that you know they've been uh, inundated with 2,200 letters. I think we had enough uh, time to put those letters together. And I think the listening sessions were important, and I think a way to almost have a second comment period. Now, they also talked about the second comment period as well. Do you think the agency gave an adequate explanation uh, on that issue and addressing the concerns of uh, credit union executives? No. I think everybody in the room would like to see a second comment period. NCUA has made it clear that there will not be one, and they did not answer the question as to why is there a rush for this. Just from a fairness perspective, I think credit unions really um, need and deserve another chance to, to see what NCUA is going to put into place. The chairman was asked about that, the second column period, at this listening session, and the answer uh, she, said, she gave was about consensus, building consensus, that their goal isn't to build a consensus and it's pretty much impossible to do so. Do you think that's a good enough explanation for why it should just be put into a final rule and, and, uh, and voted on? From our perspective and our members' perspective, it's not about building a consensus, but it is about working together to come up with a rule that, that works and doesn't have unintended consequences, and I think that's the important distinction. Um, NCUA has said, and we support, you know, we think that risk-based capital is, is important and you need to make sure that you manage for risky behavior, but you don't want something that is so restrictive that credit unions can't lend and can't do what they do best. So that's not reaching a, a consensus, it's just making sure that there aren't unintended consequences and that we come up with a proposal that actually works. Now, now, Chairman Matz was asked in terms of the second comment period mm -hmm. about having another one, putting the rule out for comment again, and she said that the agency is not trying to build a consensus, right. and she said that repeatedly. Do you think that that's an adequate explanation for that issue in particular? Well, she's never going to get a consensus. That's, that's obvious. No matter how they write the rule, somebody's going to say, well, that doesn't work for my credit union. Uh, I like the idea when they mentioned that they had a working group. I wasn't really aware of that, that they have ten, uh, 10 credit union representatives apparently potentially uh, suggested by the trade associations that they're working with. So if that's the case, that gives me a little bit more confidence and assurance that someone is uh, hearing what they're talking about and give, given an opportunity to have some recommendations. That's not to say I wouldn't like to see an additional comment period, because I think I would. Um, they talk about wanting to do that if it significantly changes, and based upon all the things they discussed, it has to significantly change. So it, it seems like a second comment period would be warranted. It was clear that, at least right now, uh, Chairman Matz is not planning on doing that. I'm only going to speculate. I think that she's put the proposal out. This is very consistent, by the way, with, with what the agency has done. You know, the, the agency, by statute, has to, has to send out these proposals, has to give the mandatory number of days. Uh, they have done all that. They've been consistent with the past. They've been consistent with the law. So I think she feels that she has enough information uh, to move forward with it.